Hello there, Dustin Zarni here, Commissioner in the Car. I got my good friend David Harding. You may have uh, noticed him from all the likes that he hits on these Commissioner cars when he's available. But also, I don't know if you know, he is uh, one of our mobile custodians here at the Board of Elections. That's what some of our part-time workers that um, help us run the elections. We're going to talk to him in a little bit about uh, what that job entails. You know, we did our Meet the Office segment last summer, and I wasn't able to um, get to the mobile office or the mobile custodians, but they're a very important part of uh, the Board of Elections. Uh, a few notes about what's going on uh, this week. Today is Democracy Day in the New York Senate. They're going to pass, um, as tradition is, they always pass a whole bunch of bills in the beginning of the session. Um, a lot of these bills were passed last year. Um, uh, they, they were, and, and once they are passed, I'm going to be doing an, a special Zoom with Zarni tomorrow with Perry Grossman of the NYCLU. So tune in for that because uh, we'll be talking about a lot of those bills that just got passed and, um, you know, and recapping that. But that that's happening today. Uh, I, I think it's not just passing uh, New York State election law, but these bills are also going to pass the Senate mm -hmm. as well in one day. Um but uh, the other uh, uh, things that we have going on uh, this week is really boards of elections are starting to get back uh, into the office after our uh, after the holidays. Um, unfortunately, we had to our annual winter conference, which is a main training for commissioners, uh, had to be postponed because of the Omicron virus. We were supposed to go next week. Uh, we're now not going till March. We are going. We will have uh, training. Um, yeah, I think this is something that, uh, you know, when people were talking about mandatory training, that uh, people didn't realize that that already happened on a voluntary basis for most commissioners in, in, in uh, New York State. And one of the reasons I testified that um, training should be mandatory is because a lot of counties refuse to send their uh, commissioners to these trainings. And um, this is, will be very important to, uh, uh, to do. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, um, but uh, and, uh, you know, so, but unfortunately, because of the Omicron virus, uh, that will be, that training will start on uh, March 1st now, which will be fine. We'll, we'll have plenty of training before the elections in June. Uh, we're preparing for the village elections in Fayetteville and um, a few other villages in March that are having elections this year. Uh, so that's another thing that we're, we're uh, uh, going. And yes, Judith just commented on the thing that we just heard today that John Kako has tested positive for uh, COVID. This we is, wish him well. We absolutely wish, we wish him, him well. well. He's, um, uh, um, he's uh, obviously with this Omicron virus, He's boosted. He's he's uh, va vaccinated. Uh, this thing is very transmissible. Many people are going to have it, um, and that's why I upgraded to the K95 mask. I know you have the N95 mask on. Yep. Uh, so upgrading your mask and wearing it uh, will help you uh, with that as well. Um, but it's not going to prevent it. It is very transmissible. That's why testing needs to go out there. That's why... Uh, we all need to be safe. All right. So, Dave. Hello. Uh, Dave, welcome to the pod. Uh, it's great you, to be here. You've been a friend of the pod, a friend of mine. Absolutely. For a very long time. Yes. And uh, um, a, a few years back, you started working with the Board of Elections in the uh, uh, the um, the role of uh, mobile technician. Or, I, don't know or if it's, I don't know if it's custodian or technician. Uh, we've, both. we've used that yes. term interchangeable because it started off as custodian back in the lever days when we had those lever machines, but now it's more of a mobile tech because yes. it's a it, it, it's a high uh, tech thing. So tell us a little bit about what your position is. So um, thank you again, Dustin, for having me on. Um, so the technician position is kind of, um, you know, if you, if you look at kind of what your typical positions are at a polling site. You have your election inspectors who just kind of check people in and do some of the, the lower level okay. tasks. You have your VSSs who handle the voting machines. You have your poll site managers who are 
VSSs plus extra, yep. the technicians are kind of an extra step above that. Right. And they can do anything that a PSM or a VSS or an inspector can do, but they can do uh, extra things and they have extra duties. So um, they're kind of divvied up different ways. So um, I know here at the board that we work with, um, let's see who it is. It's um, Kelly and, and Sid, and Sid yep. because uh, Kim moved up. Um, we work with them who are the, the main, the full-time technicians here. We'll help them to uh, check to make sure pre-election that the voting machines are working correctly and something we call pre-lat so that they will, uh, they turn on, they turn off, the, L the LED screens uh, work, uh, LCD screens actually work fine, that they can read all the correct ballots, that the printers for the BMDs work in case someone needs to use uh, an ADA ballot. Um, that you know that they have all the correct uh, equipment with them uh, just to make sure that everything works before they go out because if it goes out and it doesn't work uh, you're in a lot of trouble That's right. um, we also will help with training yep. so we I, I'm not typically involved with that but I can I can uh, help to do training so training our election uh, inspectors our VSS's and our PSM's and all the facets of uh, running a polling place on election day or early voting um, they're involved with that. Typically that is done by some of our former full-time staff members that have subsequently retired but still want to be active. Uh, often they're invited to be uh, custodians or technicians and they, they do go into that more of that training role. Um, I have not done this either, but I know I've helped with uh, absentee ballots or other mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, but uh, more towards like the election day kind of stuff. Um, the stuff that we're responsible for is kind of, at this time, running early voting sites. So uh, right now, um, since we started r early voting in 2019, um, you know, every early voting site will have a election technician there to kind of run the site, uh, you know, because it's a little bit different. Some of the equipment is different. Some of the rules are different. Uh, and there's only six, well, there are six sites in the past. We, we believe be there's, there's going to be 10. <laughs> yep, there'll be 10. Uh, There'll be 10 this year, starting this year, so we may have to pull some, some poll site managers up and give them some extra training to yeah. let them do it. But, um, you know, that's that's the pre-election. And then with the actual election day, um, typically we're the, we handle between uh, five and eight polling sites. Um, I think we, I, in the past I've done up to eight or seven or eight. Uh, this year, uh, for 2021, I think each of us were down to five or six. Maybe yeah. somebody had seven in the city, some smaller ones. Uh, but what we're responsible for is, you know, uh, making, talking to the people that are in charge of the sites, making them sure they're aware of the election is happening, um, you know, going over the floor plan with them if anything has changed. I mean, that's, Kim, Kim does that too, but uh, who was a Well, former, you go, but you go the days before. Well, I was going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so we'll do that and just kind of make make sure that they're aware and then um when we have the moving trucks go out yep. uh the about five days before the election uh we will make sure that the correct equipment is delivered That's the right. right amount of equipment uh that it's put in the right place um and we'll make sure that it's stored in a proper place until the day before the election when we will go out and set up most of the polling site we'll put we'll make sure that they have the right number of tables chairs that the layout is correct that the plugs work so if you plug in your voting machine, or if you plug in your printer, or if you plug in your, uh, you know, iPad uh, to check people in, that everything works. Um, and then uh, on election day, we make sure that all the sites are running correct. Uh, everybody shows up. Right. Uh, that all the sites are running correctly before, hopefully before 6 a.m. and it's showtime. Uh, then throughout the day, we just kind of drive around and check in with people. If people need have uh, technical problems. If there's problems that the PSMs can't solve. Uh, if, you know, we're told to go, if there's an incident, we're told to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we basically are the eyes and ears of the board in the field uh, for higher level problems that like a PSM can't handle. And then towards the end of the day, we will help uh, the PSMs at the individual voting, voting sites. Uh, poll, poll site managers. Poll site managers, yeah. I'm sorry if that's using the lingo. The, not, people the not lingo, for, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, the lingo can be a little weird. Um, but help them close up and help to make sure that um, they can close up in a timely fashion, in an accurate fashion, uh, that there's no poll site that is, you know, struggling. If there's somebody that's struggling, we go and help them. So the results aren't delayed, so the card runners, I don't know if you've ever told anybody what a card runner is, 
Yeah. How you get, okay, so that's next. We'll do a card we'll, runner. We'll do a card runner one day. Okay, but um, to make sure those results are in timely, to make sure the equipment is put away, that every polling site is put in a you know, not a pristine condition but acceptable condition, and that the equipment is where the moving truck can come either the next day or later in the week to pick it up. Right. And obviously the poll site manager goes either uh, to a, a rally point if it's in a town to drop off their the ballots and all the important um, you know uh, paperwork and things like that or to make sure that they're in their car heading here to the, the BOE the Board of Elections if they're in the city. That was very comprehensive and very, that's why he's one of our best uh, mobile technicians. He knows exactly what it is. I think people forget that you know part of running an elections board is you know we're we're, we're small staff for a little while but then at, when we come into the elections yep. we have our inspectors we have our mobile technicians it's like fielding a, a small army uh it definitely and, is. you know it's like a thousand you know a thousand uh inspectors another 26 uh supervisors that go around which is the mobile technicians mm -hmm. so we have a lot of um areas that to keep uh things from you know, no election is perfect. There's always going to be problems on election day. There's always going to be problems during early voting. And that's why we have people in place to solve those problems in a, in a way that will uh, have as least impact on voters as possible. Um, so, Dave, what are some of the things that you're, uh, you know, let's talk about that, the problem solving. You're, what are some of the issues uh, that you've uh, had to deal with in the field? Uh, so, that, so I did talk a lot about the, the rules and the yep. technical things. So half of that is being a professional. It's knowing what to do, when to do, and then doing it. Right. The other half of the job is the people side. Right. Dealing with people, whether it's inspectors, voters, um, candidates, poll watchers, yep. people who are electioneering, or um, people in the media, if right. I didn't mention them. So I'll give you an example. Um, I was doing early voting in 2021, and I had a husband and a wife come in, and they both were checking in. The husband checked in just fine. The wife checked in. So, you know, same address. They lived at the same house. Right. Uh, older, older lady, I will say. Um, not in the poll book. Ended up having to call the Board of Elections hotline. She did not end up in the poll book due to a clerical error on the part of the Board of Elections. Yep. Uh, I could kind of, I could kind of tell that it was not going to go well. I mean, it, it wouldn't go well for anybody. So, but I can tell it wasn't going to go well, and they were upset. So, and we had a conversation about what the procedure we need to do. That you have to do what's called an affidavit ballot That's in order right. to do that. And so, you know, she can't, looked at me and kind of angry, said, "You know what? If this happened to you, you'd be so upset." And some other things. And I said, "You know what? You're right. If it was me. I'd be very upset. It's not okay. What happened? But we're going to fix it." And she was like, "Oh, well." Thank you. Yeah. So sometimes showing some empathy, keeping a cool head, you know, uh, not giving that back to someone can really help. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't call it customer service because voters, people, some people say voters are our customers, but they're like a customer you can't turn away. Right, right. Because it's, you have a right, right to vote. You don't have That's a right necessarily to go to McDonald's. That's absolutely right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but you have a right to vote. So if somebody is a voter and they want to vote then you gotta you know no matter sometimes no matter how they act you gotta help them to vote unfortunately so you've been in uh, a mobile custodian through the time of covid you were yep. here in 2020 yep. yeah you were here in 2021 yep. how but you were here before that too yes. right uh yes. so what are what are the changes that you know that we've implemented that you've had to deal with or, or challenges that you've had to deal with because of covid um, you know, there have been a lot of changes, you know, I think cleaning stuff is a big thing, although I'm not, a, I do it because it's our policy. I'm not a big fan of the cleaning because I, you know, the COVID goes through the air. It doesn't really go through touching things, but it could help but, with other but stuff. But we still do it. We still do it. Um, you know, getting people to wear masks, but that really hasn't been a problem. I think, you know, in the, in the last... 2020 and 2021 I've maybe had a few people I've had an issue with and generally if you just hand them the mask they just kind of put it on and then vote and then kind of leave I think the number one thing is like voters coming up to you and telling you that they don't like certain policies and I have to tell people you know we 
we just follow we, we there's New York State has its election laws and regulations and we just follow them if you don't like them you can talk to one of the commissioners you can talk to your county uh, your county legislator you can talk to your state reps you can call the governor or if you want to go federal you can call your congressperson or senator mm -hmm. we don't make the rules we just enforce them if you don't like a certain aspect of New York State's voting laws I, I encourage people to contact their uh, their their elected representatives. And the ones that make most of the laws are on the ballot this year with yes. the state Mostly assembly state. and yep. senate. Yeah. Uh, and Congress. And Congress. Uh, so uh, that that is all on the ballot this year. Well, what I, I always like to you know ask uh, at the end uh, is you know what haven't we talked about? What what are what are some what is something out there that maybe we haven't mentioned yet that you would want people to know about? what a mobile custodian does or the board of elections in general. So what, what I would say is, you know, I, I, in my, in my, let's see here, 2019, 2020, in my four years and going on five years of working at the board as a election custodian, uh, the full-time staff, very professional, very competent, very willing to do what it takes to get the election done. I think that my number one issue mm -hmm. is the lack of resources given to the board. You know, like I said, people are working hard. They're using what they got, but you know, we could, you know, we could really use a lot more manpower. And, and the uh, at the full time positions, we could really use a lot more equipment. We could use, a, I think, I think more training for election custodians, VSSs, and PSMs would go a long way in reducing some of the problems that we might have. Uh, you know, we don't have a lot of them. I'm not saying we do but um, could even reduce that further, being having the resources to do outreach to voters a lot of the time, um, you know, a better, better equipment, um, a better website perhaps, yeah. all, all those kinds of things. So to me, I would ask people to, you know, let, people, let the people that make those decisions know that the board really needs a, a lot more help. So whether that's at the county level or the state level or maybe in the federal level, just, just let them know. People are working hard, but they need they need a little bit more. They need a little more help in the material department. Uh, yeah, absolutely, we do. <laughs> but uh, um, and that's been my drum that I've been meaning for a while too. Uh, well, um, you know, that's about it for Commissioner Nakar this week. Um, I, last week, um, I was supposed to do a Zoom with Zarni with Perry Grossman of NYCLU. But I had a scheduling conflict, so we couldn't do the taping. So it didn't air on Friday. We're taping tonight, and it'll air tomorrow on Tuesday. On Wednesday is my wonky Wednesday. Uh, I did last week, I did a, a breakdown of Election Day voting. Uh, and this week, I'm going to do a breakdown on what we call the, the Red Mirage versus Blue Shift phenomenon, which is how ballots uh, and, and leads have changed after Election Day. Um, uh, and uh, I did talk about the change in county ledge chairman last week. Uh, I don't have much more to say about that. Uh, strange day is not another strange, county it is, government. I can, it is, I can say that. One it, day is stranger than the other. It is weird. So check for that Wongi Wednesday. Um, and on Friday, I will have another Zoom with Zarni uh, with uh, Kate Doran. Of the League of Women Voters of the New York State, we'll be talking about what uh, the League of Women Voters does and what they're hoping out of the next session. Um, and remember, I did launch my website, DustinZarney.com. You can go to that uh, to see all this stuff on there. I think I've gotten up to September of 2019 posts going back. Um, what a lot of the media mentions, but all of the commissioner and cars, all of the Zoom with Zarnies, all of the Wongi Wednesdays are over there from that I've done. I think there's over 570 individual posts now on that website. I'm continuing to update that. Um, so if you want, you can go over there and subscribe. Remember, it, you will never be asked to pay a dime. I will never have outside advertising on there. That's something I do on my own personal funds. Uh, no Substack, no Patreon. No Substack, no Patreon, no OnlyFans, nothing of <laughs> that. Uh, but uh, it, it's all going to be, it's just there as part of my voter outreach and a way to kind of collect it collect all the uh the the election news in onondaga county uh there so if you feel like it go there and subscribe you'll get an email once a day kind of letting you know what's going on uh you know and when i when i do updates so check that out uh in the meantime thank you very much please be safe wear a mask numbers are at record highs in onondaga county all through new york state um and while 
Omicron is seen to be lighter and milder, that doesn't mean that hospitalizations aren't there. That doesn't mean that our, our, our medical staff is at their wit's end. ICU beds are still filling up. And so far, deaths have not risen at the same rate but they are rising and therapeutics can only go so much. Please mask up when you're in public indoor spaces. Please, uh, uh, you know, have as much respect for other people as possible and don't put yourself in a bad position. You'll be better off if you don't catch COVID. Um, it's never too late to get vaccinated. And either. get vaccinated, get boosted. I just got my booster. I actually have very mild reaction to it. I was just tired the first day. I got my booster and my flu shot. So I'm triple vaxxed and flued up and I'm, uh, I got a whole bunch of science running through my body. So I'm really happy about that. So go out there, get your appointments. And if you're feeling sick or if you feel like you've, uh, you know, you've been exposed, get tested. Get tested as soon as possible so you can know and isolate and keep other people um, safe. Thank you very much. And I'll see you over the next week. Bye-bye.